Hi, this is Mori reporting from Berlin and this is part uh, 8 of my using React to Split D3 series. And uh, in this one I want to show you how to create this uh, Breaking Bad timeline right here. So Breaking Bad is my favorite show of all time and uh, um, I thought we can make use of the uh, things we've learned so far and work with some real data. And uh, yeah, so this chart will uh, show a line for every episode in the series and uh, the height of uh, each line will depend on the amount of main characters in uh, that episode. And what we can also do is we can select a character, for example, one of my favorite characters, Mike Ermentrout, and then see uh, in which of the episodes he was a main character. So for this episode, we're gonna make use of the uh, Breaking Bad API. It's a public uh, API, you can just use it. And uh, you can uh, find information about the characters, episodes, quotes of some characters, deaths caused, caused by uh, certain characters, um, and so on. And we're just going to make use of two different endpoints, uh, one uh, for the characters and one for the episodes. Here in uh, the app, I'm just basically uh, calling these two uh, endpoints in two different use effect hooks and uh, saving the episodes and characters in uh, two different uh, use state hooks. And then I'm using these episodes uh, to pass them to my uh, timeline component down here. And I'm using the characters to create this uh, select input uh, to create the options for the uh, select input down here. And uh, then when I'm selecting a character, I'm also passing this highlighted character uh, to my timeline down here. So now we're gonna rebuild the uh, timeline component from scratch and this is the same um, boilerplate uh, component I have been using also um, uh, in the last video basically and uh, I'm still using use effect to access the SVG element down here to work with uh, D3. I'm using the use resize observer hook to get the current dimensions of my SVG and uh, what I also have it's a little uh, helper method to um, parse the uh, date strings I'm getting from the Breaking Bad API so that I can uh, work with them. So now I want to start off with the x-axis of my uh, timeline and to do that I have created this uh, g element down here where I want to render my x-axis into and uh, yeah to create a timeline we also need to work with uh, date elements uh, and we need to know when the first episode of Breaking Bad aired and when the last episode of Breaking Bad aired. So to set the min and max of my timeline, I have to import two things uh, from D3, min and max. And uh, I want to uh, use them to create the min date and the max date of my timeline. So um, the min date is going to be uh, min. Uh, and here I have to tell D3 uh, where to look for the min date. And uh, it is going to be inside of my data. And then I have to tell D3 what to compare inside uh, that um, like data array. So I want to compare each episode and I want to compare the dates um, of my episode. So I have to say get date, which is my um, helper function, which transforms these strings into real dates. And here I'm going to pass the episode dot air date. And the same thing I need to do for max date, like so. So if I log out these min and max dates, you can see in the first date, uh, first airing date was January 20th, 2008, and the last airing date was September 29th, 2013. So now that we have the min and max date, uh, we have to import something from D3 called scale time. And scale time is going to be helpful to uh, map these uh, dates from 2008 to 2013 to the available space we have in our uh, SVG. So it is also going to help us position each episode on our X axis, depending um, on the time that episode aired. So now let's make use of this scale time to create uh, an X scale, which will uh, map these dates to pixel values on our uh, X axis. And for doing that, I have to say const X scale equals scale time. And here I have to define two things, the domain, which are the input values, the range of the input values. And I have to say here, it is going to be from the min date to the max date. And the output values, which you have, which you have to define in this range function, 
are going to be from zero to dimensions dot width, which is the total width of our uh, SVG. So uh, if I save this, yeah, this X scale will return like a zero if I give it a date, which is equal to the date of the first um, episode. And it will return the like the max width of our SVG if I give it a date which equals to the uh, airing date of the last episode. But if I give it something in the middle, it will give the uh, appropriate pixel value for us. So now that we have our X scale, we can now finally render our X axis by importing axis bottom from D3. And then I have to say um, const X axis equals axis bottom with my X scale. And then I have to tell D3 to basically render or, or position this um, X axis by saying SVG select um, my X axis G element down here by saying select dot X axis and call X axis. So this will render the X axis uh, D3 will generate for us uh, inside our uh, G uh, element down here. So if I save this, you will see now we have an x-axis. It's not correctly positioned, but we have it uh, nevertheless. To position my x-axis correctly, I just have to say uh, dot style uh, transform. And then I have to add here translate y, and then I have to say uh, dimensions dot height uh, pixels. So if I save this, you will see it will be positioned on the bottom of my SVG. The axis bottom just refers to the labels be being positioned on the bottom of the uh, like line here. So now for the episodes, I want to create a line for every episode uh, in this data array. And for that, I have to say SVG or hey D3 uh, select all of the existing elements with the class episode in my SVG and synchronize them with the data I'm giving you here is the entire data array. And uh, for every episode, which is still missing, create a new uh, line element in my SVG and also attach the attribute class uh, episode to them so that, the, so that they can also update uh, later. So now I have created a new line for every uh, episode in my data array, but they're not visible because I haven't defined where the uh, coordinates uh, of each line is. So now I have a line for every um, episode in the data array, but uh, they're not visible because I haven't positioned them yet. And uh, what is a line in SVG? A line has uh, four attributes, uh, an X1 and a Y1 attribute for uh, the first dot of a line and the X2 and Y2 attribute for the second dot of a line. And these two uh, coordinates will get connected to uh, render the line. And these four attributes we now have to define with D3 to make the line visible. So now I will start with the um, X1 attributes. I will say enter X1. And the X position of uh, like the episode is going to depend on the episode itself, on the airing date of that episode. And for that, I have to uh, pass in a callback function, which receives the current episode of my uh, like inside of my data array as an argument. And here I have to use the X scale, which is responsible for transforming the date of that episode into a pixel value on our timeline. And here I have to then say get date episode uh, air date. And yeah, the air date is a string which will get transformed into a real date with this get date function. And X scale will then take this date and transform it into uh, like a pixel value to position the episode on the yeah, X axis. So now for the X2 value, it is going to be the same as X1 because our line is just going to be vertical anyway. The X uh, coordinate of the second dot is going to be the same. And now for the Y values, uh, for that I have to say uh, at her Y1 is going to be dimensions dot height, which is going to be the very bottom of my SVG and the Y2 adder uh, Y2 is going to be for now just zero so that we can see a full height line uh, for each episode. 
And one more thing I have to add, it is going to be a stroke so that they can actually be seen. I have to say, or I would say that the, each line will have a black stroke. So if I save this, you will see, yeah, we now have a line for every episode on our timeline. So before we mess with the height of each uh, line here, let's first make use of the character selection down here. So if I now select the character, I want the line uh, to be green if in that episode that character was a main character. And yeah, this character I select here is going to be passed to this component via this highlight prop. And uh, this highlight prop I need to use for the uh, stroke attribute. And instead of just saying black as, uh, as, as a hard-coded value, I can also just define a callback function here, which receives the current episode as an argument. And here I want to say episode characters includes my highlight. So if, it, if that characters array in each episode includes my highlighted character, I want the stroke to be blue and otherwise uh, I want it to be black. So this has to be a question mark. So if I save this and select uh, Hector Salamanca, for example, you can see uh, we're now highlighting the, highlighting the episodes blue where he was a main character. So now in order to make the height of each episode depend on the amount of main characters in that episode, we have to create another scale, which will map the amount of uh, like main characters in that episode to the amount of space we have in our um, SVG. So now to define this uh, Y scale, which will help us to map the amount of main characters to the Y space we have in our SVG, uh, we have to import something called scale linear from D3 and define another scale, which I'm gonna call the Y scale. And it is going to be the scale linear. And here I have to define two things, the domain and the range, the input and the output values. And the domain is going to be the somewhere between the max amount of characters we can have in any episode to zero. And the max amount of episodes, um, the max amount of main characters, we can find out with the max function we have also used earlier. Here we have to pass in our data array and then tell max where to look or how to compare these episodes to find out the max value. And the max value is going to be the episode, episode characters uh, length. And here I have to add another, add a zero. So now we're mapping, for example, 10 maximum main characters, like the range of 10 to zero, to, um, to um, like a pixel value on our, um, SVG and yeah, for the pixel values, we have to define the range and the range is going to be somewhere between zero and dimensions height. So if I save this, um, this Y scale will return a zero or the very top of my SVG if uh, that episode has the highest amount of main characters. Uh, but it ha if it has no main characters, it will return the very bottom of my SVG. So now we have to make use of this Y scale for the Y2 attribute. And here I have to pass in a callback function again with the current episode and pass the uh, length or the character's length of that episode to my Y scale. So I have to say episode character's length. So if I save this, uh, you will see now we will have uh, the appropriate length of, uh, yeah, for each episode. So yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you liked it. Uh, maybe I'll do some more visualizations with this uh, Breaking Bad API um, or make a series out of it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.